What's going on people? Today I wanted to talk about a case that I got that's quite interesting. A lot of you guys may have seen incision and drainage of an abscess. Abscess is just a, a cavity, a collection of bacteria underneath the skin or it can be you know different types of places like the abdominal cavity, the chest cavity, stuff like that. But essentially an abscess is when the, the bacteria is not able to get out of the body. And a lot of times we see them for different reasons. In the inner city, there's a lot of drug use, IV drug use, and so people like, you know, inject their, after their veins are all destroyed, or if they don't want to use their veins to hide like their drug use, they'll inject it under the skin or mostly in the, um, in the muscle. So like a lot of times in the shoulder, and you'll get these abscesses in the shoulder, and they can turn it from an abscess into what we call a necrotizing infection or necrotizing fasciitis. The necrotizing fasciitis is when the bacteria moves along the planes of the tissues. So imagine you have the muscle and then you have the fat and skin, and then in between that layer, those layers is like a potential space. And if the bacteria gets along that potential space because there's not a lot of tissue to stop the bacteria, then it can separate those two tissues and form like well, the bacteria can go and form an abscess or become like kind of necrotizing in between those tissues and it can spread a long way. So what I'm talking about today is a necrotizing uh, soft tissue infection of the perineum, which is called Fournier's gangrene. And this is kind of an interesting entity because most, most of the time the patients have a, some kind of an injury or something or a pimple in the perineal area. If you don't know what that is, it's between your balls and your ass or, you know, the other stuff if you're a girl. What's so devastating about it is that typically these patients are diabetic and they have un uncontrolled diabetes. Their sugar is really high and when you have high sugars you're mo much more prone to infection and in fact after surgery a lot of elective surgeries you, uh, patients that are not diabetic get insulin to control the blood sugar so that way you can decrease the rate of infection. So what happens is you have a pimple or something and you have uh, bacteria and your body can't take care of it very well because the uh, glucose is too high and so that then goes under the skin and spreads in along the fascial planes or along the tissue planes and it can spread super fast um, and one of the these signs and symptoms are like first of all they get fevers second they get pain but it's like it's not just pain it's like ex what we call exquisite pain and they can't walk and you know if you just barely touch them lightly it's like they want to jump off the table so that's kind of the classic uh, signs or symptoms of um, an abscess uh, because that tissue is like under pressure from the bacteria the bacteria is trying to get out and it can't because uh, it just doesn't have a way to get out it's, so it's trying to trying to leave the center of where it was which is where it starts destroying the tissue. And so I've seen them where it starts the perineum like around the anus or you know close to the testicles or something like that. And it spreads so bad that it goes into the scrotum around the anus and stuff. And the treatment unfortunately for any kind of necrotizing fasciitis is uh, what we call wide surgical debridement. First you do place them on antibiotics course but you can't treat it with just antibiotics if you treat with try to treat it with just antibiotics the patient will die so you do what's called wide surgical debridement and you take all the tissue that does not have blood supply and so you start cutting where the you know the, the you see the infection from the outside typically most of the time you do sometimes you actually don't see anything on the outside which is very tricky in Fournier's gangrene typically you'll see like a redness at least and you can tell where the worst part is and so you start cutting that tissue out in like circular kind of motion or a um, fashion you basically take all the skin and the soft tissue or as in fat out until you get to tissue that is healthy and is bleeding and then you know you've reached the edge of the infection that's where you stop your debridement the thing about Fournier's gangrene is it can go into the scrotum and when it goes into the scrotum basically what you have to do is remove the scrotum. So I've had patients where you remove the entire scrotum, 
which means dingleberries are hanging out in the wind. Typically it doesn't go into the testicles, it only stays in the soft tissue, so you remove that soft tissue, and then you have just like, like how do you, what, like, what do you do with that, right? So that's a specialized kind of treatment there. So I'm going actually to see this patient that possibly has Fournier's gangrene. So when you see that, or it's, somebody mentions that, you want to kind of move as fast as possible because letting it go for hours can worsen the spread of infection. And in fact, I had one not too long ago, not Fournier's gangrene, but necrotizing fasciitis, where the patient injected some drugs into the thigh and there was no, there was just a lot of pain and there was no redness really or induration or fluctuance or anything like that. Actually, there was a little bit of fluctuance. So what I did and everybody said, well, you know, this patient's getting really sick, but we don't really know what's wrong with her. She's got some tenderness in her thigh. They took an x-ray to a bunch of air. So a lot of times the bacteria in the tissue will produce air, gas forming uh, bacteria. So that's one of the signs of uh, the classic kind of tip-offs that you have a necrotizing infection. You take an x-ray and there's a bunch of gas in, gas in the tissue. And in fact, there's a bunch of gas in this this person's tissue that I'm gonna go see right now. So what I did is just, I said, well, you know, let's let's check and see. I think this is sounds bad. So I just went to the bedside and made a small incision about that big and pus just like shot out of it, even though the overlying skin looked totally normal. So then I was like, okay, well, patient has to go to the OR. And in fact, that patient later, not that time, but I took all the skin and fat off of from the hip down to almost the mid calf. That's how fa far and fast that that had spread. And so later actually the patient had to lose the leg because it couldn't stop the infection. I had to actually transfer that patient to a higher level of care because typically we don't have the resources as in the personnel to deal with that patient because there's so intensive care like bedside care. That's about all I want to say. It's a fascinating for the clinician, not for the patient. Disease process, Fournier's gangrene. Check it out, look it up. Look at the YouTube or the Google for some pictures. It's really disgusting, you're gonna love it. All right, you guys, hey, thanks for watching these videos. Talk to you later.